Hello, welcome to the Infinite Rock Materials Guide. I'm going to take you through the process of how these work. It's not difficult at all, and the majority just moving sliders, but there are some specific things which I'm going to take you through. Um, and I'll show you a couple of things about how some of these sliders work. Um, but what you'll see when you first open the file is these are all 18 formations. Um, and these are the boulders. There's two boulders, but these are just one boulder with a variation of the two with a variation. And I'll show you how to use them as well. I'm going to get it all done in one thing. And over here, you've got your formation group. All 18 are in there. And here are your two boulders. Those are four. As I said, I duplicated. So for now, I am just going to take what I put here. I'll explain what I'm doing shortly. No, clipboard is not empty. Okay, let's try and copy it, paste it. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to hide everything apart from formation 12. Oh, I've hidden the sum. Uh, hide, and these two, and let's hide the boulders by simply clicking this. Okay, so let's talk about what you're gonna see. All of these formations of boulders have a subdivision um, in their group turned off. So all you need to do is turn it on to see what's going on. Um, okay, let's get into the group. And they're all pretty much the same. Uh, not this. This is only here. These four nodes are only here for, the, uh, for this guide. But you'll just have a group like this. And I'll go straight to the ramps first. My mouse button is not working. So let's go to rock color and it says in brackets ramp, which basically means it's a color ramp. <clears throat> and color one and color two are color one. Oh, sorry, color, color zero, color one on the ramp. But they're called color one and color two in here. And position one and position two are position one for this, which is that, and position two, which is that. And in the groups, in order for you to ha access a color ramp outside, in, um, if a color ramp is within a group, in order to access that color ramp and its controls outside the group, um, I needed to get something like this, which I somehow found with a lot of searching. Someone had done this. I wish I'd notated who it was, because this is not mine, um, but it works perfectly. So yeah, these are what are connected to these, to the, anything that says ramp will have a color ramp connected to it. So this is a ramp and um, with all the filters, you've got shape ramp, filter two, shape ramp. And again, I'll explain. So if we control shift click this, because you need Node Wrangler. Now we just bring up the darks a bit so we can actually see it. So this is, this is the color ramp. So this is position one that I've just moved. That's position two. And then obviously you've got your colors, colors one and two. Um, and the way this works is, Let's say I put the same, if I feed the same into this, into the factor, and then I copy these positions. So black is at uh, 0.450. So if I put 0.450 to position one, and that's clearly at one. So position one needs to be at one. And then if I control shift click this, it will be the same. It, nothing will change. See, it's exactly the same. So by moving position one and two, like this, we can, as as the color ramp works, as you know it works, if you've used them. So when you're over on, on the group, when it comes to rock color ramp, you know exactly what that means now. That's color one, that's color two, that's position one, that's position two. So if I now, whenever you control shift click anything, control shift click the group, and you'll be back to square one. So if I wanna change the shape of this, um, will go to a shape ramp. So there's no colors because you only need black and white for a shape ramp. You don't need to change the black and white. So you've only got the positions, but you'll see if I start and always shift click when you do anything because just left clicking is too much. So shift click, shift left click, and then I'm gonna start bringing, effectively adding more dark, more black. So you can see by adding more black, it's behaving exactly like a color ramp. If I add more white, things will get stronger. 
So that's how anything that says ramp works. There's even under your ambient occlusion, there's a position one for the ramp. So that's just the black. Um, the more black you give it, the more um, ambient occlusion there will be. I mean, I haven't got a lot for that one, but. Okay, so that's how the shape, anything that says ramp, that's what's going on. It's plugged into these so you can have access to position one, two, color one, two, because there is no way to connect that to this. There's no inputs and outputs other than these. So that's what all the ramps mean. Okay, now let's get into it. So UV generated, I mean, that's just whatever mapping you want, but I always have UV um, because it's more control. Um, overall scale, I'm, li I'm just doing things that you, you know, you kind of, you get overall strength. These are all numbers you can muck around. Not, uh, every every formation has a random shape. So if you put in oh, a great deal there. Yeah, okay, so you just put random numbers in and you get a random, random shape. Now the ambient occlusion, let me just turn this right up because I'm not seeing any. Yeah, there we go. So now position one again, I'm adding more ambient occlusion. The darkness is spreading until it gets really dark. So you can see it's getting darker and darker around those occluded areas. Okay, so that's your ambient occlusion. Right colors, self-explanatory. Color one, color two, position one, position two. It's a color ramp. Now all the rocks have a varying number of filters to play with. I'm actually gonna turn the AO back down to point eight. Um, so filter one, and this is literally just shift, click and slide, see what happens. You can kind of tell which textures they're plugged into. So when it says filter one, you've got scale and randomness. So that's obviously a, a Voronoi. Filter two, scale randomness, that's a Voronoi. So this one seemingly is all Voronoi. Um, <clears throat> but there's most graves, textures, waves, we'll figure it out. Okay, so if I now start messing with the scale of filter one, stuff changes if I'm changing the shape if I lose the randomness what happens it's still fairly random anyway but and then I've shown you the shape ramp so filter two and again this is just experiment go lower this time um, it's absolutely up to you that's the point in these uh, groups is that it's just experiment away do what you want move shape sliders about. You've got your principal BSDF here, and I only think you need three. You probably don't even need one, but metallic, um, I'll just put it there. Specular and roughness, that's pretty much all you're gonna need. And the bump is there as usual, strength and distance. So that's the groups um, sorted. And how we make, a, if I make a shape actually, um, this is how I would make something um, like a cliff or a whatever. So I'm just gonna, I start with a plane, RX90. You can't see it, the screen is so bright because the sun, I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. And I'm going to just extrude, extrude a bit. In fact, if I just go straight up, uh, like that. And I'm going to, I've uh, got proportional edits done. I'm just going to bring this round off the top a bit and maybe bring out the middle a little bit like that and then maybe that at the bottom like that. And as I say, this is just me making any shape for speed. But if I was making a cave or a rock face proper, then I would likely spend more time editing um, the shape because at the moment I'm clearly just making a little oval rock face kind of thing. So that'll do me. Um, I might subdivide it once. And I'm going to add a subdivision surface. I cannot see at all because there is so much sunshine. Right, I'm gonna put that up to four. And the next important step is you want to select all your faces and either I found two that work unwrap and cube projection so if we go over to Voth and then uh, it was 12 wasn't it yeah formation 12 
and there you go. So that is, I mean, as I say, it's cube projected. I can try unwrap. Let me just try unwrap. You, you. That's that's actually a better unwrap. Yeah. And then of course, you can go into your UV editor, tab out, and if I just turn off the um, overlays, and then you can, you know, scale them on the X or. So you can physically change it as well. Just um, I didn't want to do that. Just by changing the shape of the UVs, if you so wish. Some of the formations have X and Y scales. Um, but yeah, that's it. Now, now that shape is ready for any formation. So I could put any of the IRMs on that. That one, whatever that is. Uh, that thing. I mean, they might take some tinkering. Obviously, that one might need a bit, a bit more scale. But that's it. Once you've got the shape set up, they will all work. That's oh yeah. The, this is lava. It doesn't have a variation in the images because it's just solid lava, um, like or drying lava. And you can remove the lava so it's completely dried by using these. Slide left for less. Slide right for more. So if I just go on my point one. Then it's dry lava, so there's no point of variation because it doesn't need one. It's intended to be, but that's if it was on the floor. So yeah, that's all of the all the formations will just sit nicely on top of whatever you've done, um, as long as you've cube cube projected or or just unwrapped. Um, blimey, it's warm. Let me think. I think, yeah, we'll talk about the baking. Let's talk. Let's talk about the baking. If I turn all that off and then go back to this, and this um, this applies to every single one of these shapes, is um, these are your texture outputs that you need to bake. So let's say we wanted to bake this exact form the formation, this exact formation, and we want to use it in Eevee instead of cycles. This is how we would go about such a task. Um, we'll turn this UV editor into an image editor and then right this is a, a kind of five six step process um, for, for all of them I'll show you as long as you follow these steps it will always work right new we want to click new image we want to make that 4096 4k I always do it at that don't need alpha give it a name um, form 12 disk because I think I have a few files already saved. I'll do form 12 disk. Okay. And now we have a blank canvas. And in your shader editor, I haven't put this as default because it just makes it look messy for the images. So just put in yourself an image texture. I've done that with my Q quick menu. You can do it with Shift A texture image editor. Um, and then in this you want to change that to form 12 disk this image that we just made. So it's important that you have this here on the form 12 disk. You have a texture node within your shader to house form 12 disk. And then a couple more things we need to do. I believe I've already done them in mine, but under performance in your render settings, under performance, under tiling, use tiling, uh, there, you want that to be, to match whatever you put in. If you put 8K, then it needs to be 8K. This 4K, 4K, and under sampling, you only need one render sample for baking. You don't need denoise. You don't need anything but one because it's just color we're getting, not shadow, light, anything. And you can turn off your um, Dubri thingy visible sub div. And then in your render settings, let me close some of these. Uh, we want to go to bake, and here init. So let me just run through the steps again in case you click it and it says, no, it's not going to work. Oh, and also the object, uh, I need to put that back on. The object also needs to be selected in your viewport and make sure that the render is on. Because I've if that's off and you try and bake, it says no. So if you get a no, make sure the render's on. So render's on, object selected. Form 12 disk in the Im image editor, form 12 disk in an image texture, emit, bake. And let me just see, is it, yes, it's going nicely. Um, 
it may be quick, it may be slightly slow, I don't know. It's It seems completely random. It's quite quick, it looks like it's done. Ah, you see what I <laughs> These are all the steps you need to follow. Scrap that, you need to click the button. Control, shift, click any one of these. I can't believe I just forgot that. So we're doing displacement first. So I control, shift, click, displacement. Then all the steps are there. Form 12 disc, form 12 disc, object selected, control, shift, click, displacement. Let's try again. Le bag. <clears throat> and hopefully it will be as quick as it was the last time it was. Ignore the fact that it's flipped because it's UV unwrapped, it will match. Um, and now to, we went to save this image, save as, and importantly, open EXR float full. Sorry, the sun's on the screen, yeah. So open EXR float full, um, and it will be form 12 disk EXR, save image. Now if we control shift click the bump, we'll want to click the cross in the image editor, add a new image, call it form 12 bin. Um, it doesn't need alpha or 32 bit float. Did I have 32 bit float when I? I'm gonna, I might have to do this placement again, sorry. Um, okay, and let's change the image texture to form 12 bump. Make sure that's on and bake from emit. Bake. We are going to go back to displacement because I don't think I saved it. Are we? Do, yeah, I didn't save it properly. Okay, this one image save as form 12 bump. That I normally save them as a TIFF, that'll do. Save as. In fact, here we go. We've got to do that for color. Color. So we're going to cross that, click new. And remember, for displacement, you want 32 bit float. Only on displacement. You don't need that selected for bump or color just displacement okay and let's change that to form 12 what did, i didn't give it a name form 12 uh, col that'll do so that's form 12 col i need form 12 col in here there it is is that form 12 col yes that's selected um we've got control shift click that so we can just bake we're nearly done um, for pretty much all of it. There's not a great deal else to to talk about. Um, they're very simple to use. Okay, so that's the color, image, save as. Um, and I'll just save that as a TIFF TIFF, save as. Okay. Right, now, if we duplicate this, and I'm just gonna move by pressing M, just to move to the scene collection. And I'm going to hide the formation by doing that. Now we can click the cross, and because now there is nothing in the scene that is using uh, an IRM shader, we can now switch to EV. I'm not sampling, there he is, EV. Okay, we're in EV. So now we click new and we want two image textures. Remember that's Shift A. But for me, it's my quick menu. So two textures, you can duplicate them. Oh, I've made noise textures, not image textures. There. So two of them, you want a texture coordinate, which I believe is an input texture coordinate. Um, and come from the UV, because that's what we baked, the of. And then put the top one in the color and put the bottom one. Oh, we need a bump, which I believe is in vector. Vector bump. Excuse me. Bosh that in your normal. And then in the color one, you want to open form 12 col. And because we've copied it, it's already, we copied this plane, it's already UV unwrapped exactly the same way. And in the bottom one, we want the bump, form 12 bump. And as I say, because it's a UV unwrapped, it's all matching nicely. Um, with the bump and EV, you'll see it, it's usually a little bit too strong for me, but let's get to the next step first. So over in your um, modifiers, you want displace. And in displace, we want to click new and then go to your text properties and then open a new image and we want form 12 disk. And it will do something very strange. And let's just put the subdivision surface on. 
So as you can see, it's a mess, but that's because it's not set. So under um, coordinates, we want UV and it's on normal, which is great. And then just ramp up the strength. I mean, it might do it in a strange way. It's actually pulling it away um, from us, <laughs> but at oh, the mid level, there you go, put the mid level up. Okay, so there is formation 12 in EV. So that's that's the way you, you do that. I'm gonna bring up the roughness and I'm gonna show you one extra trick because you can't, I don't think, I'm not sure if you can, if the AO bakes, it might, yeah. No, it would bake, it would bake. But if you need to add ambient occlusion yourself, some more, um, you wanna add and shift A input ambient occlusion. You want a color ramp. I'm not gonna tell you where they are, I'm sure you know. And then you wanna bosh that into there. And if we control shift click that and we bring up the blacks. Oh, in EV, you've got to um, you've got to set ambient occlusion. I can't see the sun, it's just there, ambient occlusion. It's got to be selected in order to work. So yeah, if you, you can bring that up as much as you want, or as little as you want, and to match, uh, to mix it, <coughs> you just want a mix RGB node. And in fact, plug that one in the bottom, that one in the bottom, this one in the top. Set that to multiply, ramp it up, and then control shift click the principal BSDF. And now you've got um, a slider to control. Oh, it's not. Yeah, plug that into the principal. And now you have a, a slider to control um, everything. It's quite subtle, as you can see, but if you brought that up, it would not be so subtle. See, it's just darkening up those creases like that okay and that's that's the same process for every single shader of how to bake it and how to bring it into EV so you can make mountains and cliff faces um, and where I find volumetrics way quicker although cycles has got a lot better I think that's all you need to know um, to use them just append it um, you know, just make a file and then append one of the formations from the main file. And as I say, once you've made shapes, just unwrap it. As long as you get a good enough unwrap, it will be good. Or if you don't particularly need to unwrap, you can just um, go with generated if you just want total speed. Although that doesn't make it, no, we can't do it here because um, this is an EV, it's already set. But you know what I mean. Okay, so that is, I think that's all you need to know for the shaders we're all good and we just look down what i think uh, do that uh, the boulders the boulders let's do the boulders um that was close so i'm so sorry i have to keep leaning forward because i can't the sun and there's no curtains right boulders okay boulders are very simple um, when Blender decides not to crash. If I finish that, I'll be devastated. So I'm going to turn the formations off and go to boulders. Ah, that's why. We need to be in cycles. Otherwise, the computer might crash, which it's trying to do because now it's trying to compile shaders. Yeah, this is why you stay away from EV until you've baked. Right, now if I go back to render and I put the subdivs on, it's going to keep doing this now because it's trying to render shaders when I clearly clicked off the EV. Uh, that one, that one, that one. It's messing me around. Uh, right there. So the boulders work like this. This one, boulder one, if you duplicate it, and in fact, I'm gonna, no, 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 Stephen, if you press Shift D and then duplicate it, you can see it changes shape depending on where it is. And there's a strange thing that if you put it down, 
and it looks like this, which is pretty much the same. If you then shift D again, it changes the shape. I don't know why it does that. I have no idea. But as you see, if you shift D and move your stuff about, you're going to end up with loads of different folders, different shape folders. And they can also be baked as well. And they've each got, uh, they've, they've, they've got the same uh, formation group. Don't need that. Uh, with a few shape ramps, you can experiment with those um, various shapes. But yeah, boulder one, you can just move around and it will change the shape. Boulder two is more move it around, it will change, but the shape relatively stays the same. So that's because what you can do is make your own shape and uh, the material will um, follow, basically. When it stops, I'm going to hide these. Turn off the sun. So yeah, so if I copy this one again, as I say, the shape, the shape doesn't change hugely. Why is this being so slow? It's never this slow. Um, again, if I shift D that one, that will change. In fact, let me just do that and then delete the third one. So you can see that it does, it does change. It does differ in shape. All right, there you go, now it just changed. So it looks like um, the plant from Little Shop of Horrors. Eat the see more. So when I say you can change the shape, I'm going to put proportional editing on by pressing zero at O. And if I tab into edit mode, when you grab um, a vertex, is anything happening? Why is my blender doing this every two seconds? Right, and then if you move move those points, whatever points you picked, the texture will, it's turned proportional editing off. Blender, you're winding me up right now. Why do you keep pausing? I turned proportional editing on and it's turned it off. Right, I'm gonna quickly save this, close it and bring it back, bear with me. Right, I'm back. I'm hoping it's, it's gonna stop messing around. It's not, it's doing it again. Oh, this is killing me. Why have you decided to do this right at the bitter end of this tutorial? Right, I'm hiding that and I'm gonna take the sub div down. Right, let's take this down to four. Maybe that will help speed things up. Right, okay, so I'm gonna grab a vertex or vertice or sum. And then if I move, um, make it a bit smaller, the ring with my mouse wheel, you can see the boulder, it, it follows what you're doing. So if I now move a different um, vertex, it might not be bigger, and just drag it up, like that's maybe a little bit bigger. There we go. So these boulders, the boulder two is more intended to be shaped yourself. You can mess around with the geometry and you'll end up um, with your own individual boulder. Wicked, that's it. We need no more introduction to the IRM. That's everything you need to know. There will be updates. I have things in mind for an update, for the next update. But for now, the core is all there and good to go. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you have fun with this and make some awesome pictures. Okay, sweet, I'll see you next time. Bye.